Fuel subsidy program online eligibility checks begins today. Defense white paper to be tabled on 2nd December. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. You're watching News on 2 with me, Mohamed Amin Carlos. Well, Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamed defended the Royal Malaysian Police, or PDRM, following the arrests of several individuals believed to be linked to the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam LTTE group. Well, he said the police had briefed him on the matter and he was satisfied with the reasons given for the arrests as it was made to prevent terrorist activities linked with the group. Saya dapat briefing daripada polis, mereka memberi sebab-sebab mereka bertindak. Saya puas hati dengan tindakan sebab-sebab uh, mereka mengambil tindakan itu. The Prime Minister said there were a lot of polemic responses by certain quarters on the arrests of the 12 individuals, which also included several politicians. Previously, Bukit Aman Special Branch Anti-Terrorist Department, E8, Deputy Director, Dato Ayub Khan Maidin Piche, reminded all quarters, including politicians, to stop making any statements that could undermine police investigations. While Tun Dr. Mahathir also stressed that the Security Offences for Special Measures Act 2012 or SOSMA can be applied in the nationwide crackdown on LTTE linked elements. Well, the public will be able to check if they are eligible for the Targeted Subsidy Program, or PSP, starting today. Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister Dato Sri Saifuddin Nasishon Ismail said the checks could be performed on PSP. KPD and HEP dot GOV dot MY by keying in their MyCard identity numbers. Dutch's Risai Fudin said a total of 2.9 million Bantuan Sarahidop BSH recipients who owned vehicles with valid road tax would get petrol subsidies from 1st January next year. Semakan kami 2.9 juta layak atas kriteria 1,600 cc motosikal, 150 cc, daftar nama sendiri dan sebagainya layak 2.9. Tapi barangkali ada nama yang tercicir, dia tahu dan dia semak dia tercicir. Dia dah ada nama BSH. Dia boleh kemudian memohon melalui portal itu. Tapi kalau dia belum ada dalam data BSH, dia memiliki kenderaan dalam syarat kriteria yang kami letakkan. Dia mesti memohon dulu dengan MOF. Hmm. Okay. Sebab BSH adalah program kemencian kewangan. Jadi kemencian kewangan kami akan ambil data itu dan semak dan masukkan nama mereka sebagai penerima. He said this when appearing in the Bichara Panguna program aired over TV1 last night. Under the PSP, qualified BSH car owners will get 30 ringgit per month, while motorcycle owners will receive 12 ringgit per month. Well, the drafting of the National Defence White Paper is now in its final stages and it is expected to be tabled in Parliament on 2nd December. Defence Minister Mohamed Sabu said the early draft of the White Paper had been approved after it was presented in the National Security Council meeting which was chaired by the Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamed. Ini hanyalah kita nak beri panduan apa yang Kementerian Pertahanan akan buat untuk 10 tahun yang akan datang. Banyak negara-negara yang telah buat seperti Australia, New Zealand, yang terbaru China juga telah kemukakan kertas putih. Politik ini panduan pertahanan kita misalnya untuk 10 tahun akan datang. The minister said the defense white paper, the first such document in the country, will among others outline the armed forces' direction and strategies as well as on matters of funding and manpower. The health ministry is committed to kickstart the pneumococcal vaccination for children next year. Its minister, Dato Sri Dr. Zulkifli Ahmad, said it would be realized through the allocation of 60 million ringgit proposed under Budget 2020. Uh, for the amount that we are given, we must again go back to the drawing board to strategize as to how best we can get it implemented in 2020. So we have got to be, you know, uh, calculative as to uh, what is reasonable, what is possible with that budget. 
Dr. Sri Dr. Zulkifli was met after launching the Collaborative Research in Engineering, Science and Technology, or CREST, Digital Healthcare Cluster in Cyberjaya. Asked whether there was any plan to make vaccination compulsory, Dr. Sri Dr. Zulkifli said the ministry had looked into the matter and would make a final decision on it. Pneumococcal diseases are caused by a bacterium called Streptococcus pneumoniae, which can bring different types of serious infections and most commonly occur among the very young the elderly and those who have chronic medical conditions. The government intends to extend the term of service of local authority council, that's PBT, members to one term instead of one or two years as currently practiced. Well, Housing and Local Government Minister Zoraida Kamarudin said the tenure of a term of or five years was the same as that held by state assemblymen and members of parliament. pun tidak dapat menggarantikan menjaminkan bahawa uh, ni, um, pengetahuan uh, dan juga ilmu-ilmu yang mereka dapat dan pengalaman itu dapat digunakan. Jadi dua tahun tak sempat lagi kita ganti yang baru. Kita ganti yang baru. Jadi there will be no continuity therefore the PBT will not be able to improve the quality of its service to the people kalau kita terus bertukar bertukar bertukar. She was met after opening the second local authority empowerment convention in Georgetown. Meanwhile, Zoraida also called on all government officials, politicians and councillors to strengthen their comradeship and to eliminate suspicion among themselves. The Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, MMEA, detained 14 Indonesians and seized several boats at Tanjong Sedeli Maritime Zone, or ZMTS, for violating various maritime laws. ZMTS Director Maritime Captain Mohamed Zul Fadli Nayan, in a statement, said a wooden boat was impounded at about 7.30 a.m. at 3.5 nautical miles south of Tanjung Penyusup, while a water taxi was seized at 9.25 a.m. at 2.5 nautical miles south of Tanjung Bulat. Well, according to uh, Captain Mohamed Zulfadli, a team of MMEA personnel spotted both of the boats moving in a suspicious manner before moving in to detain them. Well, he said three Indonesians aged between 21 and 47 will be investigated under Section 44 and 49 of the Customs Act 1967. Well, the skipper of the water taxi and a passenger aged between 25 and 33 years old were arrested under Section 44 of the Customs Act 1967, Section 26J of the Anti-Trafficking in Persons and Anti-Smuggling of Migrants Act 2007 and Section 5 of the Immigration Act 1959-1963. Well, coming up next, need to tweak business strategy to remain competitive. Well, the Raja Promissory Agong Tuanku Haja Aziza Amina Maimuna Iskandaria stressed that speaking English does not mean that a person is forgetting his traditions, nor does it mean that he is leaving behind his identity. Well, she said it is one of the ways in diversifying and uniting the unique cultures, traditions, races and religions from all over the world. The Raja Permaisuri Agong explained that the Pahang Fulbright English Teaching Assistantship, or ETA, Teacher Exchange Program, does not only involve language learning process, but also knowledge sharing between countries from different continents. We can't be a closed society, nor would we ever want to be. We rightfully take enormous pride in our nation and our cultures, and it is our duty to share our knowledge custom and cultures with the wider world community. And this is where I hope that ETA teachers that have come to Malaysia, that not only have they have come to teach English to our students, but they also have come to learn our customs and cultures. Her Highness said that one can still keep the important values and grow to be a global citizen that Malaysia can be proud of and at the same time be fluent in English. The Permaisuri Agong was speaking at the Pahang Fulbright English Teaching Assistant Showcase 2019. Also gracing the event was the young Dibetuan Agong, Al Sultan Abdullah Ayatuddin Al Mustafa Bilal Shah, who was accompanied by Pahang Menteri Basar, Dato Sri Wan Rosli Wan Ismail, and Deputy Education Minister Tio Li Ching. The program was being implemented 
represented in nine states involving 100 ETA teachers that benefited more than 82,000 students in the country. In her speech, Twanku Aziza also conveyed the wish of the young Libertuan Agong for Bahasa Malayu teachers to be sent to the United States under the same ETA concept. The ETA program was organized by Fulbright Malaysia in collaboration between the Malaysian and United States governments. Well, there is a need for Malaysian businesses to change their business strategy to remain competitive, including focusing more on research and development, and that is R&D. Now, Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad said some businesses are too operation-oriented in delivering results and too conservative to diversifying their businesses and develop their products. This kind of business mentality and culture has to change. Malaysian businesses need to start seriously investing much more in research and tech development so as to increase and upgrade their products and service development, business processes and integrated technologies. We need to change. We need to change our strategy from being technology traders and users to becoming technology creators. According to Tun Dr. Mahathir, the Industry 4.0 will transform the labor market into a skilled-centric work environment with the consolidation of operation technology and information technology, data analytics, process understanding, and the ability to work with disruptive technologies. He also said technologies such as the Internet of Things, advanced robotics, artificial intelligence, and additive manufacturing are contributing factors to generate an increase in net productivity. The Premier said this when delivering his keynote address at the International Conference on Industry 4.0, titled A Global Revolution in Business, Technology and Productivity of My Industries 2019, organized by SEGI University in Pataling Jaya, Slago. He also said local universities need to start focusing on developing their R&D capabilities to solve industrial problems and conduct case studies to increase productivity and return of investments. Well now, the northern region has completely switched off its analog TV transmission as Malaysia moves towards digital TV. Now the analog switch off, known as ASO, took place last night at 12.30 a.m. And residents in Kedah, Perlis, Pulau Pinang and Perak are now enjoying free digital TV services that is of good quality. Now, the ASO ceremony was witnessed by Kada Information, Communications and Multimedia and Non-Governmental Organizations or NGO Committee Chairman Mohamed Firdaus Ahmad at Telecom Malaysia's Telecommunication Tower at the peak of Gunung Jarai. With, with my Freeview Digital TV, viewers can also enjoy a myriad of TV channels, radio stations and new online applications such as online shopping platforms, interactive learning programs and more. At present, 14 TV channels and six radio channels can be accessed on the platform. The transition from analog TV to my Freeview digital TV throughout the country came following the success of a pilot program that was conducted in Langkawi since 21st July. Well, coming up in sports, MFL withdraws broadcasting right payment lawsuit against TM. The Malaysian Football League, MFL, yesterday withdrew its lawsuit against Telecom Malaysia Berhad or TM over the issue of the Malaysian League or M League broadcasting rights payments. Now, MFL, in a statement, said the decision to withdraw the summons through a notice of termination filed in the High Court on 21st March was agreed upon at a recent MFL Board of Directors meeting. Its president, Datu Hamidin Mohamed Amin, said the withdrawal of the suit against TM was proof of the sportsmanship spirit shared between the league organizer and the national telecommunications giant. Datu Hamidin added that the move taken was for the sake of maintaining good relations between the two entities, as well as creating a conducive atmosphere for the development of football. In January last year, TM signed an eight-year contract with a total value of approximately 480 million ringgit. However, on 15 March, MFL announced that it was 
would terminate the contract immediately after TM allegedly failed to honor its broadcast rights payments for this season. Well, that concludes this afternoon's edition of News on 2. In our top story, fuel subsidy program online eligibility checks begins today. Join us again at 7 p.m. for more updates on the latest happenings here and around the world. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm in Carlos, signing off and stay tuned to TV2.